just wanted to come today. We've got several things on our, on our agenda, and it's a heavy agenda, but I wanted to first talk to you very briefly about the new posture of the St. Landry Chamber of Commerce. And just to clarify any misunderstanding, perhaps, about what we are doing, we're going into communities that do not have a Chamber of Commerce and offering them to be a part of the St. Landry Chamber of Commerce. There are four entities in St. Landry. Of course, the St. Landry uh, Parish Government, SLEED, and the St. Landry Parish Tourist Commission, and the St. Landry Chamber of Commerce. And so we're coming together as one, uh, really trying to have one voice, working to work together toward the same effort. And we will have some programs. One of the things that we have coming up is a five-point forum that I'll send the information over to the Chamber here in Eunice. But uh, with that said, I want to turn it over to Dwight. We have some great news for you, and today we're making an announcement, and Mr. Dwight's going to do that for us. Thank you so much. So we want to present something we've been working on for, for a long time. Uh, Tony Fusilier, who just joined Rotary uh, not that long ago, but is no stranger to Eunice in big ways, um, he and Pat and I met in May to talk about some ideas we had, some, some things we thought would be good for the community. And in that meeting, we, we sort of reminisced a little bit and thought about some uh, some of the things that used to make Eunice the crown jewel kind of of Acadiana, or one of the crown jewels of Acadiana. And a couple of things that came up were the Tri-Parish Fair. How many of you remember the Tri-Parish Fair? Yeah. So it brings nostalgic for a lot of people who remember that, but it was huge for years uh, in Eunice and was big for the region. The other one was the Louisiana Folk Life Festival. How many of you remember the Folk Life Festival from the late 80s, early 90s? Uh, Eunice was a, a, a major player in the Folk Life uh, arena and hosting the festival for several years. And so we started thinking back about how cool things were back then. There was a spirit of volunteerism. There was, a, there was an energy in town for tourism, but also for the culture. And uh, we thought, what could we do that would maybe re rejuvenate that spirit, bring back that, uh, that attitude, and, and uh, make Eunice, uh, kind of polish Eunice up and, and make us a destination again. And so we thought about a festival. And uh, you see in Tri-Parish Festival, Fair and Festival there, that's kind of where we are now. Uh, but regardless of what the name would be, the idea is to model an event around the theme of the Folk Life Festival. So it would include folk artisans um, from across the state, uh, anybody from any region. Right now, um, the Louisiana Folk Life Center is on the campus of Northwestern in Natchitoches. So part of our plan is to, to speak with them and see if they would help us to plug in to, the fe to our festival in the Folk Life component, to bring folk artisans, and, uh, and, and in a big way. If you remember the Folk Life Festival here, there were folk artisans from all over the state up and down Park Avenue, uh, and it was really it was really unique. But the flyer shows kind of some of the things that we're wanting to do. Uh, and, and then the site became the, the question. Where do we do something like this? Uh, things have been done downtown, but then uh, if you remember the fair, and I'm going to start these around. Those are pictures of the old Tri Parish Fair, and the neatness, or the, the cool thing about that, that event was that it was on the fairgrounds where the tennis courts are, uh, over by the junior high, and everything, the music, the, the, um, the f actual fair, carnival part, the food, uh, it was all compact. It was all in that one space. And uh, I have, and it's interesting because when we started uh, looking into it, I put some pictures of the old fair on my Facebook page. And my aunt, who grew up in Crowley, who's now in Texas, uh, messaged me. She said, oh, what memory. She said, I remember my, my dad would bring animals to the tri parish fair in units. So uh, there's, there's something cool that rings back for, for people uh, with the fair. This is, again, where we are right now. But the major pieces include music, a music stage. Uh, and the back of the flyer has a map of how we've kind of mapped it out. A walkthrough of Louisiana. Lynn is, is, has already talked to parishes and cities in the area to see if they might want to come and do a presentation of their area, their city, their festival, whatever it might be, and have a walkthrough space where we could just line those cities up and let people just walk through Louisiana. Uh, and then craft artists, they're always looking for somewhere to be, and this is a great place for them to plug into. Carnival rides, 
um, athletic events. We talked to David and Donnie about uh, training wheels doing either uh, 5K, 10K, David mentioned a uh, duathlon, uh, but any type of event that they can come up with, uh, that would be their baby to run with. So that's the overview. We ended up at LSUE and we had some hurdles to cross. So the, the chancellor who's a, a, a Rotarian, we met with him several months ago and the, the uh, issues, that, the obvious issues were liability, um, the uh, selling beer on campus, because uh, Coke and beer are the major fundraiser um, sources of revenue for a festival like this, uh, and, and a couple others, but those were the major ones. So the Chancellor got with uh, Dr. King in, um, in Baton Rouge, and it took months for us to get through that process, but we've been approved to use the, the campus. Uh, over 180 acres of space, and it eliminates parking as an issue uh, just in, in one fell swoop like that. So that's where we are. Uh, we've got some more meetings to go, but the, the flyer, this is a draft. So you'll see at the bottom of the flyer, we've got the arrowhead for the park service on there. We'll be meeting with them soon, uh, but we want their endorsement. And how many small towns can use the National Park Service arrowhead in their publicity for an event? I mean, it, it's, it's just amazing for us to have the park, so we kind of take it for granted. Just kind of like we take the, the college for granted. You know, it's out there, uh, but it's a, a huge, huge piece of what makes Eunice. And uh, I think there was one other. Yes, I know what it is. Uh, uh, the Joe Nagata Foundation. Right. Uh, and more on that to come. But, but Tony's already looking at um, car donations and things like that. Here's the big issue. Dwight and I worked volunteers for Folk Life Festival. We need a lot of volunteers. We are going to go for some, some grant money for publicity and, and the kinds of things. Uh, Celeste at St. Landry has already said you know, they do provide some money for, for PR and stuff like that. So we're going to go for that, but not necessarily under the state's wing. Um, Lynn's been in touch with uh, Lieutenant Governor G Darden's office, and uh, he's replied and said he's, we're waiting on dates for him to come and, and visit and hear about it and uh, tour the campus. So good things rolling. Right, so it's a great opportunity. I think it's still in the seed stage, but if, if anybody feels like, you know, we can be a benefactor, not only us, but the community, we need to have a motion to, to say, you know, let's... If a motion is in order, I do, I move that we <coughs> sponsor and get all this... Any seconds? Yeah. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Rotary Club will be presented. It's exciting times in St. Andrew Parish. There's a lot going on and a lot on the horizon. With that said, I'd like to introduce uh, Bill Roder with uh, SLED, and he's going to come up and tell us about another great project that's going on. We have a lot to tell you today, so uh, we're, we're talking fast. Yeah. Uh, Bill. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. The level of cooperation that we have right now between economic development, which is composed of an industrial development board, as well as a nonprofit organization with parish tourism, with the Chamber of Commerce and its new direction and some of the exciting things <laughs> happening there, and also with parish government. That level of cooperation to the extent that we're actually cooperatively contributing dollars towards a lobbyist firm, one of the best that there is in Baton Rouge to move our parish priority agendas forward in the ne next legislative session. I, to the best of my knowledge, some of those things have not happened before. What it shows me is that we've got people that are truly passionate about making a positive difference in St. Landry from a leadership perspective. And I personally think that Eunice is just unbelievable that the attitude that you guys have and some of the things you bring to the table. And I, you know, I've, I've often wondered as somebody not being here from St. Landry Parish, you know, how do we kind of harness some of your energy and bring it into um, the focal point of the parish? And so let me kind of tell you where we're at with some things. When I first got to St. Landry Parish, as somebody not being here, it, you look at the straits, you look at the low-hanging fruit. I've always thought that you, it's much easier to capitalize on the weaknesses, or rather the strengths, than it is to try to fix the weaknesses. It doesn't take somebody that's an uh, economic development professional to look at St. Landry Parish and see the transpor <coughs> transportation hub with I-49 sitting in Opelousas and how 
really some of those uh, major in intersections on that interstate are not being utilized. There's no tax money being generated by, uh, for the parish in that respect. So I've always thought a little bit, I have a uh, office in Opelousas, it's a 15,000 square foot business incubator that now has eight businesses located within it. I would encourage any of you to stop by there, by the way, this is kind of a side note. Um, I've got three staff members that work there. Um, uh, one of my staff members comes over here and works out of the mayor's office at City Hall every Thursday. Um, but I've always thought that, that if we could just develop, if we could just develop the Gilbo Road exit, we could develop 190 and really get them to the potential that they need to be, we, we essentially start a catalyst that blossoms throughout the entire parish. For years now, and I don't, can't exactly quantify how long, three years, three and a half years, maybe even a little bit longer, there's been a consideration with the equine-related industry in St. Landry Parish of if we built something as an event type of an arena around St. Landry Parish, would that make sense with all the equine-related industry that we have here? So that idea kind of started to percolate a little bit, and people started looking at the potential with it, and they came up with the thought of building an expo event arena that would gear, gear, was geared towards the equestrian industries. It was a good thought. It fits. The equestrian industry is big in St. Landry Parish. The problem is, is if you build one of these facilities, you know, Make it as nice as you want. You know, fully enclosed, air conditioned, you can make it state of the art. If you put it out there by itself, it's not like we got the Dallas Cowboys here. I mean, we're not gonna, it's, 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 it's gonna be something that probably at best breaks even, and it can't be a monument sitting out there by itself. It needs to have other development around it to support it. It's a big asset to the parish, but it's got to have something around it. If it's the center of the donut, the exterior of the donut has to support it. So over the past year, we've had some pretty in-depth feasibility and usability studies done on this concept. But coming right now and looking at where could we put something like that? Would it, if we built it, is there the interest? And can we get the private sector actively engaged and meaningfully engaged with dollars to a project like this? So here's what we came up with. For those of you that can't see, I apologize. This is as big as, this is as, big as I've got. And in St. Landry Parish, and they told me not to step away, they made me promise not to step away from the microphone. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, if you don't mind. So what you're looking at, what you're looking at here is the, <laughs> the furthest south exit in uh, Opelousas, which is all you know is a Gilbo Road exit. And for those of you that don't know um, the details of it, or just can't kind of picture it in your head. The Gilbo Road uh, is, is a one mile stretch from the interstate over to Highway 182 in Opelousas as it runs to the east and west. Um, it's really only got three corners that are developable in it because uh, you, you drop into the basin on the uh, southeast quadrant of it and it drops about 20, 25 feet. And I'm told that many, 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 many moons ago that was the, the Mississippi River banks over there, so it drops off pretty hard. Um, what we've got is the potential in the northwest corner which would be this corner up here. For those of you, some, as a point of reference, this is the Clos de Bois subdivision, so any, if that rings a bell to any of you. This is the Copper Crown Equestrian Center that's to the south of Gilbo Road. And we're looking at two huge tracts of property, and even property in excess of this. This development potentially encompasses as much as 700 acres. We have private sector to the table drawing up the legal agreements right now to donate us 60 acres of property within this northwest quadrant, which would form the basis and the footprint for the equestrian multi-use event center that we would uh, look to put in on that side. What are we talking about numbers with this development? We're talking the potential and the build out the in excess. Once this property built, is built out in phases, we're talking the potential for the revenue generating of an excess of $100 million annually with that project completely built out. We're talking the potential for this property to bring 100,000 people or more to St. Landry Parish every year as a destination location that wouldn't otherwise come to this parish. Truthfully, what we're trying to create is a destination location. We have the center itself. We have the, the thought is to put a 200-acre RV park, upscale RV park is part of this development. The thought is to put a four-block river ranch style, multi-story, mixed-use type development just to the south of Clos de Bois, restaurants, food courts, commercial retail, loft living above it. The thought is to have three hotels on the site, just on the west, uh, northwest corner of the site. 
The thought is to, and we're working with right now, big box retail, just to the north of the Laje I Plenty. We've got contracts in place on the east side right now with major anchor tenants already to come in on the east side as part of this development, uh, which will be re really the fuse that ignites this project. And maybe one of the most important parts of this is, other than the fact that we've got actual con uh, contracts going in place on the east side of the interstate right now, is that I made this uh, similar presentation to our legislative delegation in St. Landry two weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe? Um, as you know, many of you know, our St. Landry's carved up into a lot of little pieces. Um, and I'm not sure that's always a good thing. But I made this presentation to them. And you know something? Not one legislator from St. Landry Parish, representative of any corner, did come to me after and said, whatever you need, I will carry the whole thing. I will carry any part of it. Whatever you need me to carry in Baton Rouge, I will carry it into Baton Rouge. So are we going to carry something into Baton Rouge? Absolutely. What we're going to carry is we're going to, as we, as we continue the engineering studies and some of the more detailed work on there, our intent is to use the collaborative the lobbyist firm that we have, Cornerstone Governmental Affairs in Baton Rouge, along with our legislative delegation, along with a unified front of St. Landry Parish, and go to the legislature next year and tell them, hey, we've got private sector that's putting three to four million dollars into this project. Economic development's put in excess of a hundred thousand dollars into this project. What's the state going to do for an economic impact for this region that could exceed a hundred million dollars? We're going to ask the state for six million dollars in infrastructure costs for the west side of this project. We get that set, that money and in infrastructure uh, infrastructure supported by state capital outlay, and you may say that's crazy. Guess what the city of Scott got out of capital outlay in 2013? Would anybody just take a guess? Wild guess? 19.4. The city of Scott got 19.4. They say money isn't there? It depends on how you go ask for it. It depends on your justification. It depends on the plan, and it depends on who represents you when you go ask for those dollars. So. Is it a slam dunk that we're going to get that money? No, it's not. But we're not asking for something for nothing because we've got an excess of at least three and a half million dollars that we'll be asking as a match as part of that component of it. With that much, with the development that's already going on on the east side of the interstate and the northeast quadrant, with infrastructure in on the northwest quadrant, we're off and running in not just an expo project, but the development of a destination location for St. Landry Parish. Tell me what's in it for Eunice. I mean, there's got to be something in it for Eunice. That we're only 18 miles. Away. It's only 20 miles away. Uh, it, it's it's bringing people here for multi-night stays that wouldn't other, otherwise be here. You talk about these festivals. You talk about the culture. You you talk about capitalizing on that. You got a captive audience. They can't stay at these events the whole time. Maybe their kids are doing something. Maybe their kids are waiting to compete to another one. Maybe they're in a volleyball tournament there. We're going to be looking for things to do. Uh, they'll be here. This is a parish effort. It's not an Opelousas thing, it's not a St. Landry Parish thing, it's not an economic development thing. It's everybody in this parish and it benefits everybody in this parish if we can get this project to move forward. So it's really exciting when we combine this with some of the exciting things we're doing with the industrial projects that we're recruiting now. Bill Fontenot is going to be putting asphalt down on roads um, as early as some, still this month. Um, that's going to bring a lot of rooftops into St. Landry Parish. There's huge potential. It's a great time. The economy in Acadiana is blowing and going. And if we don't take advantage of this, shame on me. Because that's my job, is to take advantage of this and help improve the quality of life and economy in St. Landry Parish. It's my job, but it's my job to help all our communities and all our leadership, like the Rotary, to get that done. So, I'm just one person. I'm here as a resource. I'm obviously, a, if it doesn't show I'm passionate about what I do, I wouldn't do anything else in this world, including being retired, but doing what I am right now. I think our future is absolutely, I can't, I can't even put a cap on what our future could be if we can do some of these things that we're working on right now.